Ouija Wellbeing is really excited actually to be part of this initiative along with Cornerstone and the aims are really to find ways in which to help the staff find new strategies to take care of their health in a very holistic manner. So that's looking at everything that contributes to your overall health and well-being and that can come from the physical side of things, the physiological side of things, the mental, the emotional and the lifestyle factors which are involved on an everyday basis which we're going to evaluate and help you make better choices for yourself. So stick with us, there's going to be a range of videos, this is the first in the series of the Mere Than Mindfulness. Um, Ouija Wellbeing was founded a couple of years ago and the mission is really to spread the word raise the awareness throughout our um, nation basically because of the deep ingrained ways in which we live, the habitual ways of thinking, the patterns and the cycles which have been really impacted for quite some time through society and some of our cultural ways of life. So it's really about breaking those cycles and planting seeds for future generations. Our mission statement really is planting seeds for future generations and I guess that's meaning that it starts with us. It's our generation, which is in the spotlight at the moment. And we're finding all sorts of modern day factors that have been simmering for a while and they're starting to reach a boiling point. And that is actually a gift for us. It enables us to really reflect, but also plan and put into action these changes which are going to have a major effect on our children and our future generations. A lot of this as well many will find is about undoing. So it's not about just building on our foundations, it's also looking at what we can take away there that we've perhaps not recognised has not been useful for us um, and no longer serves us purpose. So I'm really hoping that this series is going to empower you and you will realise the potential in which you have. First up, I'm just going to hit you with some statistics so that you can recognise what we're looking at when it comes to our culture. So these are statistics from 2019. And as you can see, I don't know them off the cuff here. So um, I'm just going to read out some of the categories for you just to give you an insight. So we're looking at um, some of the age groups and I'm just going to start with age group 20 to 39 here. We have about 34% of people in the category of 20 to 39. They are suffering from skin conditions and allergies, which can be very much connected to various factors that we're going to cover in this whole series. We've also got 27% of those 29 to 30 years who are suffering from stomach, liver and kidney and digestive problems. We have 47% of those in that age group that are unfortunately suffering from depression or nervous disorders, anxiety. And 44% are diagnosed with a mental illness, a phobia or panic attacks. You also find as you go along into the age groups 40 to 44, some of that reduces but then it hikes up again when we're going into the age groups of um, 50 to 54, 50 to 59 and so on. So many of us um, have also been diagnosed with various chronic conditions and life limiting disabilities. And these are across the board you're looking at from the age of 20 right up until um, 65 and above. And what we're finding is, although we're living longer, we are finding that many people are getting diagnosed with various conditions from much younger ages. So it's looking at the ways in which we can try and um, set the correct foundations so that we are going to be less likely to accumulate and manifest some of these illnesses but also if we already have some of these conditions we're going to look at the ways in which we can try and maintain some things such as our pain levels, um, our overall health in the sense of our well-being, how we feel in our minds but also our fatigue levels, the way that we manage stress, how we sleep and the ways in which we can find a more mindful way of approaching life, even when we do 
feel that we have been a victim and even when we feel that we don't have the same quality of life in which those around us have. This is going to hopefully give you some insight and enable you to step forward with some self-belief and with confidence that there are some things which we do have power and control over. I guess that you'll be wanting to know a little bit about my background. I'm a holistic therapist. I've been practicing for around seven years. I'm also a coach. So that entailed learning about not just therapies, but also about lifestyle advice, stress management, um, nutrition, mental health, and um, how to look after your well-being. I've also got personal experience um, in a multitude of ways when it comes to dealing with um, chronic conditions. I have experienced a lot of kind of hardships, I guess you could say, throughout my life from my teens and my 20s and really it took me to my 30s before I realised that I had to really look within and find ways in which I could um, better my health and that was from a very holistic point of view. So it wasn't just looking at symptoms and finding ways to relieve them, it was looking at the ways in which all of the contributory factors come together in one pot, I call the stew pot when I'm doing work workshops with people. It's called the stew pot because there's all these ingredients that come together that is a recipe that um, contributes to the way in which you are in this present day and the way in which you will be resilient, the way that you can handle physical stress, mental stress, but also the functioning of your body and the way in which your gut and your digestive system functions, the way in which you get rid of toxins, the way in which your hormones are balanced and the way in which you are going to be able to handle anxiety. So I'm hoping that even though some of the subject areas we cover you may well know a lot about already, I really hope that you'll be able to take away some food for thought and be able to apply it to your own lives. All of us are individual, we've all got unique needs, but I have found that um, many things can resonate, especially with our culture. And Ouija wellbeing is all about, you know, the Glaswegian ways of life, um, but also nationwide, the British culture. Um, is very intertwined with Americanized culture and it's really shining a spotlight in all of that and realizing that we have to get the balance. So although we can live um, vibrantly and in a way, you know, Ouija's are known for being brash and for seizing life, life's too short, you've got to live it, but it's also realizing that many of the underlying things there that we can underestimate that we're doing on an everyday basis will determine whether we can reach our full potential in our health and well-being. Our generation have also become really interested in psychology and the power of the mind and that whole phrase mind over matter has empowered us in many ways. Um, however, what we've found is that being interested in mind over matter can give the illusion that the mind is the one thing that we should focus on and the mind will balance everything else. But a holistic approach is looking at the body, mind and soul aspects. And we need to look at these aspects in order for us to, th to thrive, um, in order for our body to function properly and in order for us to set the correct foundations and the environment within our body. So it's not just about what we absorb through the mind, it's also about what we absorb through our body, through our gut, through our skin, through our environment, through our foods, but also pathology and looking at hormonal disruption, disruption and what can determine whether our hormones are supported or actually something working against the homeostasis of our body and the balance in which we need to fully reach our full potential. I am going to be covering a range of topics in this series. We're going to look at energy and frequency and the power in which you have over your own vibration, how you can protect that, but also how you can boost your frequency. We're also going to look at modern day factors and stimulants and triggers, things which are not conducive to us living a, a more balanced, um, grounded and calm, stress-free life. Um, we're also going to look at some of the helpful strategies 
versus some of the unhelpful strategies in which many of us have perhaps become steered towards using in our life. But also looking at what can make you more vulnerable to stimulus or more resilient. So hopefully this can shine some light on some of the things that you might be able to identify with and then you can implement some of the changes. What you'll find is a lot of it is not just adding things to your life, it's also looking at the ways of unraveling things, all of the layers. So it's going to be quite a multifaceted journey, but I hope that you can stick with this and remember that at any point you can go back and listen to the previous videos if things are starting to make more sense for you, if you want to reflect, if you want to remind yourself, then these videos are always going to be here in order for you to just remind yourself of the power which you do hold. None of the information which I'm going to go through is designed in any way to make you feel shame. Um, it's, it's definitely not in any way to find fault or make you feel frustrated with yourself. It's basically to recognise that you have been the result of many different layers and we're going to unravel those layers. We're going to let you see that although some of these things came from our inability to self-care or our limited knowledge, our limited ability at the time, um, our upbringings, our environments, our peer groups, we are going to be able to recognise and identify some of our um, ways in which disease has manifest, whether that be physical, mental or emotional, but also be able to take back some of the control of that, remove some of these imprints that we have and that we carry with us and make changes, not just for ourselves, but it will cause a ripple effect in those around us, for our families, for our friends, and hopefully it will spread to the masses. That's the mission. As big as it may seem, it can start small because something so tiny can cause such a ripple effect in communities that it reaches far and wide.